Kagalosh Bokatov. We are continuing Mesechet Yomad of Tedvav. Today's day is 15, the 15. The Gemara on the bottom of Yudalad Amubet just said, the rabbis, how do they do, how do they explain the Pasuk, Baboke, Baboke, Betivot, and Erot? And then it says, Yaktirena. So the rabbis come on Tedvav Mudalef on the top and they say, Bidan Hatava Tehe Mektar Ketoret. Which means that when you are going to come and you're going to be doing the Hatavata Nerot, which is here we're learning that it's the last two candles. Remember that there were seven candles in the menorah in the Bet Amidash, and they split it up, five and two. So Bidan Hatava Tehe Miktar Ketoret. You're going to bring the Ketoret. So says the Gemara, Di lo hachi. Now if you're going to tell me that it's not talking about that at the time of Daktara, you're actually, meaning when you're already doing the Ketoret, the Ketoret should be done. The, the, the how do you call it, the smoke is coming up, right? And then during that time, you're preparing already the Nerot. So it says here, Dilo Tema Hachibas, if you're not going to tell me that's what we're talking about, right? When it's talking about Ben Arbaim, when it's talking about during Ben Arbaim, which is the afternoon, Dichtiv as it's written, Uv Ha'alot Aharon Eta Nerot, so we're at the top of Tedvav Mudalef where it says, right? When Aaron is going to start lighting these candles, which means that first you have to light the candles and only afterwards is the Ben Arbaim, the Ketoret. So what do you do first? The Ketoret or the candles? So he's trying to say you should first do the candles and then the Ketoret. So says the Gemara, if you're going to tell me that that's in Achenami, that's what you're supposed to do. The Tanya we learned in a Braita. What does it mean? What does that mean? You have to give it its Midah. You have to give the Menorah, the Midah, the proper amount. That it should be lit and going the entire nighttime. Yeah, from nighttime. Until morning. And another pasuk. There's no other type of avodah which is going to be kosher. Only this one. Meaning this is the only one that is going to be kosher. Which means after this, that's it. But remember, right, that already, that's what it says here. Right, Elazot, the halakat nerot is the only thing which is kosher. But remember, after the korbanat tamid, that's it. Right, you're not supposed to do anything else. The korbanat tamid finishes off the day, just like korbanat tamid starts the day. Korbanat tamid finishes the day. Okay. So says the Gemara, Ela my kama rachmana. But rather, what does the Torah teach us when it says v'alot aron et anro ben amay mektirena beidan adlaka tehem iktar ketoret? Yeah, during the time of Right, the halaka, which is halaka nerot, temiktara ketoret, right, already the ketoret will be already lit. So hachanami, so to hear the pasuk when it says betivot, arerot tirena, beidan atava, when you're already preparing it, right, the atava tenerot, it should already be lit. So therefore, Tosvot asks, why didn't we differentiate and say that really be'emet, it should be the last two candles? Because remember, we already, when we when we opened up the the Yesterday, when we opened this up and we were reading again, it was a Bashaul, it was a Baye and a Bashaul. What did he say? He said, <laughs> 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 Khamishinot is before the Damatami, Damatami is before the Shtenot, and then the Shtenot is before the Ketoret. We were saying, No, the Ketoret is before the Shtenot, okay, because according to the Shita al Chachamim, not, not uh, like a Bashaul. This is a Bashaul, a Baye, Aliba Dabashaul, but there's Chachamim that argue on it. Now, here you see, according to everybody, there's a difference between Chamesh Nerot and Shte Nerot. Okay, first you do five, and then you do two. Now the question is, what's in between? Is it the Damatamid? Is it also the Ketoret? So here it says, Tosot, Ikshub, Tosot, why didn't the Gemara just say very Pashut? According to the Chachamim, they are talking about, right, Betivot and Nerot on the first five. And that is before the Ketoret. And then you have, the second two is afterwards. So there they already have two different answers, but it's a, it, again, it's like another, you understand, meaning that here we're trying to say that it's during the time of the 
when you're actually doing the lighting of the candles, right? When you're lighting the candles, the ketoret already has to be up. The ketoret already has to be with the smoke coming up. Okay, now, what is the Bashaul going to tell you? He's going to tell you, Shane Hatam, it's different over there to do the Lakat and Rot in the afternoon. What does that mean? So we learn from here that the Lakat and Rot are the last thing that you do. Okay? Fine. Okay, very, very good. So, okay, next. Rav Papa Amar. Rav Papa says, La Kashia, it's not a question. Ha Rabbanan, Vea Bashaul. It all depends whether Shitat Rabbanan or Shitat Bashaul. Why? Our Mishnah that says the Ketoret is before the Hatavat Nerot is Shitat Chachamim. That the Akhtarat Ketoret is differentiating between the Hatavat and the Hatavah. As we already said, that it was in between. That means the ketoret was a sec between one set of candles and the other set of candles. But the one that says that ketoret is afterwards is a bashaul. Because according to Shitat Bashaul, the raktarat ketoret is after you've done all of the nidot. And the damatamid is a sec between the first five and the second two. Okay, so that's what we just mentioned now. There was a machloke between chachamim and a bashaul. What we read every single morning is a bashaul. According to Abba Shaul, you have in between the first five candles and the second two candles, we have the Damatamid. According to the rabbis, it's the Ketoret in between. Okay? Fine. So says the Gemara, Bemayukim Talmatnitin Dehacha Kirabanan. Right? What are you telling us? That our Mishnah, the first Mishnah in our Perek, is going according to who? The rabbis. Now, one second, the Mishnah that's talking about Pais, which is talking about the different lotteries. That they used to do, right? How are you going to say it's like a bashaul? Does that make sense? Yeah, meaning that what you're telling me that one mishnah is going according to the rabbanan and the second mishnah is going according to the bashaul? It, it, it's a little bit. By the way, you should know there's a whole question also as well. Why is it that every single morning we go according to a bashaul, and then on Kippur we go like chachamim? That's also a famous question of the Benish Chai. Now I don't remember his answer, but there's a famous question on it. Every single morning we come and we read Aliba Da Shaul. And then if you pay attention on Kippur, we do the exact opposite. We go like Chachamim. Yeah? Food for thought. Next Kippur, have that in mind. And believe that maybe before Kippur we'll speak about it as well. When we go through the Seder Avodah, right? That became the Minhag. Going through the Seder Avodah. So learning a little bit about the Avodah. Right now that we're doing Yoma, it's easy. Yeah? So he says, Ema Seifa. Let's see the Seifa. They brought him the korban tamin, kiratso, and he came and he cut it. Umerak acher shetiha shechita liado, and then what happened was the Quen had somebody else finishing the shechita for him. Nichnas laktir et ketoret. He went in to do the ketoret, uleti v'tanerot, and to do the nerot. So this is a tal the rabbanan. This goes according to the rabbanan that the ketoret was before the nerot. So reisha v'seifa rabbanan metzieta b'shul, which means like this: beforehand, even you could have already asked. One second. Reisha Rabbanan in the middle in the next Mishnah is, is about Shaul. But okay, sometimes that could happen. But you now it even becomes worse because now it comes. Reisha is the Rabbanan. Middle is about Shaul. Seifa, again Rabbanan. What's going on? Does it make sense? That's what he just asked. Reisha the Seifa Rabbanan Metziata Ba Shaul. So says the Gemara, Malech Papa, in yes. Reisha the Seifa Rabbanan Metziata Ba Shaul. It's true. The Reisha and the Seifa is Shitat Rabbanan. The Metziata is going to be a Bashaul. So Vishlam Abayi no Amar Kerav Papa. It's good that Rav Abayi did not say like Rav Papa in order to answer this up. Why? Reisha and Seifa Rabbanan and Seyata Bashaul. Lo Mukim Labaz, he didn't say that. Right? Why? But according to him, he didn't want to say that the Reisha and Seifa is like Chachamim. And the middle one was a Bashaul. But according to Rav Papa, why didn't he say like Abayi? So he says, because this is the Rav Papa, that the Rav Papa is actually answering that, that yes. Right, that the Reisha Seifa is a banana, but Siyat is a Bashaul. But Amalekha, so the Papa is going to answer you, Tana Bereisha Tavat Shten Erot, Vehadar Hatavat Chamesh Erot. Right, really, Be'emet, we're talking about the Tavat Shten Erot, and then the Tavat Chamesh Erot. Okay? Fine. So basically, what we're talking about is, right, that we're talking about first the Shten Erot, and then the Chamesh Erot. 
Rabbi Amalekha, Rabbi is going to tell you, Oruye be'alma hu de'kamori. Really, Be'amet, we're just telling you what it is. The Sidra ha hada tanile, and then we're learning the Seder. Which means like this, at the beginning, we're telling you all the avodot, but we're not telling you the Seder. We're just telling you all the concepts. And then afterwards, we come and we tell you what is the Seder. Which means like this, for example, right, this is actually happening with us in Kulele. We're talking about what are we doing in order to make a Sikum. So the first thing, many times what you do is, you throw out all the topics. Yeah, one topic, another topic, another topic, another topic, another topic. Now it's not going to be in order. You're just throwing out all the, all the topics. After you have all the topics on the table, now you're going to say, okay, now I'm going to organize. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. Okay, that's, and that's exactly what he was talking about. Okay, fine. Gufa. Yeah, when we're talking about Okay, so basically like this. There was a machloket that we said to do with the Mishnah and Tamid. We were talking about the Kohen that he's throwing the blood of the Tamid. He comes to the Kerem Izachit Tzavonit, to the northeastern corner, and then he places the blood on the corner. Now remember, when it goes on the corner, it's Shte Matanot, Shehen Arba, which means it's two Matanot, one Matana on the northeast and southwest. But it becomes four because when you sprinkle it on the corner, it splits. You got some to the north, some to the east, some to the south, some to the west. It splits. So it says over here, So it says over here, We learned that he changes it by the Tamid, then all the other sacrifices, which means he's going to go to the northeast. Instead of putting north and then east, he's putting east and then north. When he's going to the southwest, he's first putting to the west and then he's putting to the south. Okay? So he comes out, right? That basically, according to the Chachamim, right? It's the derech, like just like any other korban. It's all the same. Whether it's a korban ola, a korban atamid, it's the same. According to Rabbi Shimon, Isha Mitzvah, there's a difference. So, my time, Rabbi Shimon, Isha Mitzvah, what's the difference? Why is it that according to Rabbi Shimon, Mitzvah, it's different? Yeah? So, I'm Rabbi Yochan Amishum, Chad Devera Biyanai. Says Rabbi Yochan, the name of Rav, one of Rabbi Anai, right? He says one of the Ibn Shivot of Rabbi Anai. Amar Kad says in a pasuk. The pasuk says, "Ulsi li zim echal lechatat la Hashem al olat atamid yase venisko." What does that mean? That comes to teach you that korban atamid is an olah. The Amar Achman and the Torah still saying, "Avi ba maaseh chatat." You have to do it like a chatat. So how do you do that? How do you make the olah like the chatat? Haketzad noten achat shi ishtein. Right? You're going to put one which is two. Right, kimaase ola, but shtaim shen shtaim, but they're two different matanot. Right, kimaase chatat, which means like this: you're not going to do like a chatat. A chatat is one on each corner. Right, chatat is one on each corner. The ola is two, which are four. One on the northeast, one on the southwest. They split two, which is four. So he says, if it's an ola, how do you act like a chatat? So how do you do it? So he says, no, you're right. You're, you're going to do like an Ola, that you're going to give one, which is two, which means you're not going around one, 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 one. You're doing two by two, right? You're doing one set and another set, which is two, but you still have to put it separately. So therefore, I'm going to go to the north uh, east, and I'm going to put also on the north and also on the east, not one spurt and it splits, one, one. Then I go to the southwest and I do one, one. So it's like uh, an ola that you're doing two by twos. You're not doing one, two, three, four, but it's like a chatat that it's separate. It's one, 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 like that. Okay? So I mean, that's how you're doing it. That is the reasoning of Rabbi Shimon Isha Mitzpah. Okay? Everyone with me? Yeah? Yes, yes. Very good. Veliten shtaim she'en arba. So ask the Gimara, why don't you just put two which are four? Just like the Ola, right? Or, and then afterwards, Arba Shenaba, like the Chatat. Meaning like this, one more time. Korban Atamid, the, the Pasuk said, it's an Ola. But the Pasuk said, it's a Chatat. So decide, is it an Ola or a Chatat? So we wanted to make a compromise. It's like an Ola that you're not going to do one, two, three, four. You're going to do two, two, one and one, right? That's a two by two, right? But it's like a Chatat that you don't just do one sprinkling in the Northeast. One sprinkling in the northwest, and then it splits. You give one, 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 one. So it's like a chatat and like an ola. So ask the Gimara, why don't you just do right 
two, which are four. Go on the northeast, sprinkle one. Southwest, sprinkle one. Split. After you finish, now do like a chatat. Do it again. And do one, 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 like a chatat. So answers the Gemara, lo matzinu damim shemechaprim mechozrim mechaprim. We don't want to say that answer. You know why? Because we've never seen that the, the, the blood, right, can come and be an atonement again. Meaning once you've done the atonement through the blood, it can never be again. You can't just do it again. So because of that, they say they don't want to answer like that. Okay? Fine. So they don't want to answer like that. Next. Fine. But even according to your reasoning, you've never seen a blood again could be another kapara. So once it was a kapara for once, it can't be a kapara again. Yeah? So the question is, did you ever see a, a blood which is half a khatat and half an ola? Here you did half half. You're neither here nor neither there. Where are you? Meaning if you're already forced to say that, so this is ignorant. You've never seen the blood be kapara twice. Okay, here it's going to be the first time. Why? Because of the circumstances. So no. There, I just did a matana. Remember that the throwing of the blood is called like a matana to the Mizbeach. It's like a present to the Mizbeach. Here, we just did the pesuk in the matanot. But it's not going to affect anything else. Okay? Right? So therefore, there's no, there's no difference. You know, you just stopped the matanot. Big deal. Okay? Nothing happened. Fine. So says the Gemara, Why don't we do one which is twice? Lemata kemaseola and shtaim shen shtaim lemala and two which are two lemala like the chatat, which means like this. If you remember, what do we say? What's the difference between a chatat and an ola? So we know that a chatat and an ola, they are sprinkled in different places on the mizbeach. The mizbeach has a chuta sikra halfway down in the mizbeach. That's why it's going to be one ama below the the sovev. Right, you're going to have what's called the chutzikra, a red line. Okay, now certain times, certain sacrifices, they are done above the chutzikra, and certain sacrifices are done below the chutzikra. If it's done above the chutzikra, you have to actually go on a masuvev and put it up there. If it's done below, so then it's done below the chutzikra on the bottom of the mizbeach. Okay, so now what he's trying to say now is like this: there's a difference between an ola and a chatat. Remember, ein, ein, ein. Olat ha'of is lemala. Olat behema, lemata. So, an ola by a behema, by an animal, is done below. And that's what it says here. Why don't you do shtaim? Right? It says over here, venetiv, achachi shtaim, lemata kimase ola. Okay? And why aren't you going to do shtaim, right? Shen lemala, like a chatat. So here in the footnote it says, Kavadom yatzavu alechol orechetzi agarugov amizbeach. There was a Kavadom, this is the Chut Sikra, in order to differentiate. So the Dam Bema Chatat was Lemala. Okay, mi Chut Sikra. Dam Ola was put on Lemata mi Chut Sikra. Yeah, so Dam Ola Lemata. So the question is, why don't we do like the Ola Lemata and then two like the Chatat Lemala? Meaning we're not we're not separating, right? We're just sprinkling at the same time. We're not we're not doing again another uh, another damim again. At the same time, we're going to sprinkle below and then sprinkle above. When you sprinkle above. It's going to be like the chatat. If you're going to sprinkle below, it's going to be like the ola. So answers the Gemara, the same yesod. That means before we said we haven't found the blood, again can be sprinkled again to be another kapara. Now we're saying we've never seen blood that you could sprinkle at the same time also above and also below. It's either above or either below. And if you do, if you change, it's you know it's a chova. That was the entire mesechet kinim. Okay. So says the Gemara velo. But now what about we go into the Mishnah, right? This is the Mishnah later on. The Kohen Gadol used to take the blood. You always do one above and seven below. Right? Then you It's always one and seven. It's always two and seven. Three, it's, it's always 
right? Achat, achat each time it's one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six, and one and seven. It's always separate. There's always one, and then there's the seven. So according to that, so what do you mean? We haven't seen it? The one, the achat, is above. All the rest are below. So answer the Gemara, no. Kematzli. Kematzli means is that each one was zulematam zo, which means lemala lamata over there is not mamash lemala lamata. It's kematzli. My kematzli, what is kematzli? Machver of Yehuda, of Yehuda showed it kemangadna. What is that name? Like, like giving lashes. When a person is coming and giving lashes, he doesn't hit every single time right in the same place, but rather he does it every single time a little bit lower than each other. Every single time a little bit lower than each other. He keeps on going. So says the Gemara below, but now we learned on the Mishnah. Are we not talking about on the half of the Mizbeach? Which means that it became afternoon, which means that it's half a day. It's midday. Okay, which means half of the Mizbeach. So if so, the Pirush of Nishra should be, it should be Lamala Mechetia Mizbeach. And then you have the Lamata Mechetia Mizbeach. So, so basically, it is above and below, right? Half of the Mizbeach. So answers the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Vashila, no, that's not the covenant of the Mishnah. Kedvav Amubet, Agufei de Mizbeach, we're talking about on the Mizbeach in itself, which means on the Gag of the Mizbeach, when it's going to be revealed, right? And he's going to be clean from the effort of the Ketoret. That's where it says, Bichiv, as it's written in the Pasuk, Uchetzem HaShamayim LaTohar. What does that mean, Ketzem HaShamayim LaTohar? Echetzem HaShamayim LaTohar is, is that it says over here that it's like to be mevarer. It says over here like this, today, the entire thing was done above. And we've never found blood which is above, half above and half below. So, so to the Damatamid, you can't say it's the same thing. So it says the Gemara, Mai shna diyayv ola bereisha vehada yahiv dechatat why are you first putting the Ola and then the Khatat? Maybe you have to do the opposite. Yeah, maybe you have to do the opposite, which means native Bereisha de Khatat. Maybe you have to put the Khatat at the beginning and afterwards the Ola. So answers the Gemara, Kevan the Olahi, since it's the Ola, he Kadma Bereisha. The Ola comes first, which means that when you're doing the different Matanot, first you do the Ola and then you're going to do the Khatat. Okay, that's just the order, right, of how you do things. Okay? So says the Gemara, why are you going to put on the northeast and then southwest? First do the southwest and the northeast. So Amri, they say, no, the Ola is to una yesod. The Ola needs to be put in the yesod. The yesod is a little tiny hole, right, which it goes down. The Kenan Dromim Mizrahi does not have a yesod, right? The southeast does not have a yesod. It's only the southwest that has a yesod. So because of that, Right, so that's why we have to do it in that in that fashion where you have it with the yisod. You have the picture there, right? This is the north, this is the south. So the northeast has a little bit of a yisod, a little bit of a. You see, there's a little oh, tiny no. ama over there. Then you have the full north, the full uh, east, right? And then you have the a little bit the full south. And then you have also another, sorry, not the full south. Here you have another mm-hmm. tefach, another ama. Yeah, right here you have. So now this is where the yisod is, on the southwest. That's where the yisod is. Yeah, so you have full north, full west. A little bit on the east and a little bit on the south. That's a little tiny thing sticking out. So that's where the yisod is, and that's where you have it. So it says, so why are you going to put first the north east and then the southwest? Put first the southwest and then put the northeast. Right? So answers the Gemara. Kevin Daman Mor, Kol Pinot Shatapone, Luil Dech, you always go to the right. So you go to Mizrach, Bereisha, Beupaga. So then that's where you're going to start. Meaning that you're going to always start and the way that you keep on turning is to your right. So you go to the Northeast, continue to the northwest. You continue going to your right. Each time it's to your right, right? So therefore you continue going so, like that way. So, you yeah. understand? So you're, you're always going to the right, right? I'm, I'm here. I'm on the corner. Yeah, so I'm getting my corner of the northeast. 
I go over there, that's northwest. So I'm moving to my right. I go from the northwest, I continue with my right, I go to the southwest. If I'm going that way, that way, which is basically like uh, counterclockwise, that's where I'm going to, to my right. If I'm going clockwise, I'm going to the left. Correct? Take your clock. Yeah? If I'm going to go up here, the, the one, right? If I continue going down, I'm going to my left. I'm moving to my left. I'm not moving to my right. I'm going counterclockwise. I'm going to my right. So therefore, the top right, uh, top right over here is the northeast. That's where I start. I continue moving right, to the northwest, and then I go to the southwest. So that's why I'm going to my right always. So whenever you're always turning, you're always turning to the right, to the Mizrah, right? Why is it that we found that the Ola, that you're going to do a Khatat? Maybe it's a Khatat that you have to do like an Ola. Not that the Ola you have to do like a Khatat, Khatat you have to do like an Ola. Says, no, 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 for sure you didn't think that. Why? It says, What does it mean? What, there's something of the Khatat, you're going to throw it on the Ola? Obviously not. Which means that the Ola has some characteristics of the Khatat, but not that the Khatat is from the Ola. Okay, so Tanan Hatam, we also learned another concept. Okay, this is now a new topic. It says like this The Memune comes and he tells them, Remember, the Memune was the one that was in charge, whether it was the, of the pais, of the lotteries, and all these things. So he tells them, Go bring me a tle, a sheep from, for the Korban Olat Tamid, from the Beta Tleim. Remember, Beta Tleim was a chamber in the Beta Migdash where they had all the sheep there. It was on the Mitzo, where was it? It was Sifoni Maravit. In, inside the Beta Moked, so remember if we have the Beta Moked, inside the Beta Moked, that was the, where they had the kippah on top, the dome. So inside there, right on the Sifoni Maravit, which is northwest, right on northwest, they had the, uh, the Lishkat Atleim. Right, there was the seals. That's when they made the fires. The one that they actually baked the Lechem Apani. Okay, so therefore, right now we're going to ask a sida. What's the sida exactly? The Gemara is going to ask, we have a contradiction. There were four different ones, like four different rooms which are open to a big, uh, like a big ulam, like a big uh, ballroom. Steinbach two of them were in the Beta Midash part, so they were holy. Two of them were Bachol, were in the outside of the Beta Midash part, so they were not holy. And there was little tiny pegs, pieces of wood, which differentiated, which showed them from here onwards is holy, from here onwards was Chol. So there was like little tiny, even nowadays, they have like little tiny pieces of metal or different things, which they show you where is the property line. Okay? What exactly was it, Meshamesh? Okay, so it says, Maravit Deromit ki aita lishkat tle korban. The Maravit Deromit, which is basically the southwest, is, was the lishkat tle korban atamid. Was the lishkat, the, the tle of the korban atamid, of the tamid offering. Okay, that means the sheep. So here it says it was in the southwest, not north. Uh, not the north, what did we just say? We said it was in north. No, these northwest. One second. We said it was northwest. Here it's saying it's southwest. Okay, so here we're saying it's southwest, not northwest. Okay. Right, so the southeast was where they did the Lechem Apanim. In the north, northeast, they did the, they, they put the Geniza Ben Chashman as the Mizbeach. So the Mizbeach, she kissed him Melchior Ben Chachumim. The Tsefonim Aravit in the northwest, they used to do go down to the Beta Tvila, which means the Sidah is from the Mesechet Amin, it was at the beginning. The Lishkat Beta Tlein was Sefoni Maravit, or here we're saying it's Diromi Maravit, right? That means is it northwest or southwest? That's the contradiction. We're on to Zayin Mudalef on the top. Amaravuna Ravuna says Mantana Midot. Who's the one that taught Mesechem Midot? Reb Liazeb Ben Yaakov. He is Reb Liazeb Ben Yaakov, and therefore it's not a Kushia, because the Mishnah Mesechet Midot is going according to Reb Liazeb Ben Yaakov, and the Mishnah Mesechet Tamid is another Tana. So since it's two different Tanaim, it's not a contradiction. Okay, the Tnam, but that's how we're going to bring down the differences between opinions of where was this Lishkav, the Tlaim of the Sheep. Mezat Hashem, we continue tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. How's it going? Welcome to you.